Good evening. Uh, thank you for choosing the Center for Urban History and Beer at uh, 6 on a Friday, on a Friday evening. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, we have with us today... Uh, we, 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 uh, some time ago we got a letter, we got a communication from Mitya Valikonya uh, who said that he might uh, present this book at the Center for Urban History. This book is, um, has only recently come out in print. Uh, this was translated, the translation was initiated by an Odessa uh, publishing house, Helvetica, and we will be talking about this book more today. But uh, before we switch to that discussion, we have um, the ambassador of the Republic of Slovenia in Ukraine. Uh, no, we'll, we'll be talking English later. And also the author, and I will give them uh, first the floor uh, for, for their welcome remarks. We will be speaking in English. We do have uh, microphones uh, or headsets you can hear where you can hear a uh, simultaneous interpretation and if you have any questions please raise your hand and we will um, and we will give you the microphone we don't intend to uh, meet for very long but if it works of course we can stay on so i it is my, it is an honor and a privilege to give the floor to uh, ambassador for his welcoming remarks after which we will switch to the presentation. And dear friends, dear colleagues, I'm very pleased and it's an honor for me to participate in the participation, uh, to participate in this evening. G good evening to you. Dear colleagues, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here with you, uh, with my colleague, uh, Dr. Mitya Radikonia, a uh, very recognized uh, professor, uh, of different uh, subjects and uh, you, I am sure you will enjoy uh, his lecture and I'm also waiting forward uh, to hear a uh, good and uh, open discussion. The project of uh, him visiting Ukraine is part of uh, the cultural and public diplomacy of the Embassy of the Republic of Slovenia. This is, the, this is how to say that the idea and the program of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Culture of Slovenia to support uh, together uh, Mitya Velikonia's uh, trip to Ukraine. I'm really glad that we are here physically, not online. And uh, once again, uh, this is just a small contribution uh, that Slovenia does for Ukraine in this difficult time. We are doing many, uh, many, uh, how to say, very uh, regular uh, diplomatic and, and, and uh, political uh, uh, activities uh, to support Ukraine, but this is also important, it's cultural and public diplomacy and direct contact, person to person, uh, which uh, we really support. Thank you. Yeah, uh, right, and now we have the opportunity to hear the author himself. The book has been translated from from English, although it was it had been published in many languages, but originally, uh, but originally it was written in English, and then it was translated into other languages. And the title of the book is the uh, depictions of dissent, as uh, in, in bold, as shows the political engagement of the author. But he will, can talk about that himself. And I'm happy to give the floor to Mitya Velikonya. He is a professor of culture studies at the University of Ljubljana. And uh, the, uh, the, there have been very uh, strong blurbs or responses to this book uh, in S Slovenia, Croatia, or various from, uh, from various places in the Balkans. Dubrovnik Ogrešić, for instance, or many other people we have witnessed uh, in connection with this region. And uh, sir, the floor is yours. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you know um, the Center for uh, Urban History that uh, hosts us here uh, this evening. Uh, to Bogdan, who will moderate this event. To, to Sofia's <laughs> wonderful and uh, Mariana, you know, who are, we were in contact, you know, and everything so far turned um, excellent. Then I would like to thank the Slovenian Embassy and particularly and personally also the, the Ambassador, uh, Mr. Tomasz Menzin, who immediately when we came in contact, you know, he immediately grabbed this, this um, 
uh, opportunity and said let's let's do it you know and you know with a lot of uh, his help and uh, and logistics you know and with a lot of enthusiasm on both sides we are finishing this week of traveling from here Odessa and now to Lviv uh, having lectures and uh, public presentations so this is the sixth one sixth one in this week so I'm uh, very happy but also very tired very excited you know but you know very very <laughs> also out of, out of out of energy and the third person uh, who is uh, not with us here is Oleg Golovko another enthusiastic guy that I met by chance you know so a year ago you know he, he contacted me you know and wrote me are you interested in the Ukrainian translation of this book and this was a time when war already started so I said not in these words but don't you have a situation that he said something that I will never forget he said yes of course we have you know but we try to live as normal as possible you know to in a way uh, this is not ignoring the reality but in a way uh, to overcome it you know so we will publish books you know and are you for that we publish a book and actually we did the last Monday 10, 10, 10 days ago um, it was published and I'm really you know I'm happy for every translation and for every book that I've published but this one is has particular you know uh, uh, mean, meaning uh, for me so uh, I will quit now with uh, thanks and go a little bit into my personal you know, family history just for a short time. Uh, the town Leaf, this is the first time that I was that I'm here, but it has kind of special place in our family's history because my grandfather was an, as an Austrian soldier uh, wanted here in Lviv and he was repeating Galicia Lviv all the time until he died. Uh, the doctors here in Lviv and then in Prague saved his leg and then he lived for a long time. His son was Italian soldier because that part of present-day Slovenia was part of Italian kingdom. And all these boys who were Slavs by, by, uh, by, by, by birth and also the name Slavko, I don't know if this is, if this is from oh, other states, okay. Slavko, you know, so it was kind of act of defiance, you know, of their parents, ethnic Slovenians toward Italians, you know. So he, as an Italian soldier, at Corpo Albini, so Italian uh, mountain uh, infantry, he was, um, he traveled through, through Lviv to Eastern Front when he was captured by Soviets and died in captivity. So two sad stories from two wars from the 20th century. I didn't expect that I will visit Lviv in such a, such a um, uh, situation as it is now, you know, but there was a kind of really um, strange kind of uh, coincidence, you know. But let's go now to the, to the, uh, to the topic that, uh, for which we uh, gathered uh, this afternoon, this evening. So, uh, as, as Bokhna said, I'm a cultural studies scholar. Culture studies did this um, kind of, uh, not evolution, but kind of revolutionary uh, move back in the 60s and 70s, kind of cultural terms, so to understand the contemporary culture, not only, you know, top-down, uh, so this traditional view, how to uh, see art, uh, architecture, and uh, other visual, um, uh, other visual uh, disciplines, but mostly bottom up, you know, so the everyday practices, you know, that are that were completely neglected in the uh, art and art history. So we are systematically and deliberately, you know, uh, dealing with uh, topics that were, that were so far neglected, as for example, food studies or fashion, and one of these is also graffiti. When I was, you know, I'm, I'm collecting, this is only one part, one phase of my, my research in the, in the 90s I was doing the cultural aspects of the two new ideologies that developed in Eastern Europe and in the Balkans as well. Uh, and this is uh, ethno-nationalism and neoliberalism, so cultural aspects of these two. In 2000s I moved to, to, um, to studying collective memory and nostalgia, so nostalgia for Yugoslavia, and other nostalgia and anti-nostalgia, so for people uh, love and hate uh, the previous decades. But I'm collecting throughout my, uh, my career, you know, different artifacts from everyday life, you know, from advertisements, you know, to little pieces, you know, that have so much meaning, you know, in our everyday, our everyday, everyday lives. And one of these is because I also uh, was um, uh, uh, enjoying, you know, times of really, you know, strong and vibrant subcultural scene in late 70s and early 80s. One part of this was together with punk, together with the uh, feminist movement, LGTB and other ecological first environmentalist movement was also, you know, making graffiti. Uh, and uh, I was collecting these materials just yesterday. We left at, at Kiev. I, I defined you know the cultural studies scholars as hamsters, you know, because we collect so many of these empirical materials, you know, and then eventually, you know, like hamsters, you know, then we <laughs> get them together, you know, and do something out of it. 
So I was collecting these materials for more than 20 years uh, from different parts of the world, you know, from, from China to the United States, from St. Petersburg to, to Italy, uh, but mostly from my region. So mostly, you know, from Slovenia, which is, as we discussed before, you know, on the crossroad between uh, uh, Central Europe, the Balkans, and the Mediterranean. It's a small country, but it has these three dimensions, you know, which are very, very uh, prominent in on all levels, you know, from the politics to everyday life, to cuisine, uh, to cuisine at the end. Um, so I was collecting this, and uh, I was collecting this, uh, I was taking photos, I go around with, with my camera, I also took it here with me, so I go around a little bit <laughs> during this weekend. <laughs> uh, and uh, this study and this book is based on 25, about 25,000 original photos that I took myself, uh, and they are still all in my archive. Only, I don't know, 1% maybe of the photos that I have in my archive are sent by other people or taken from internet. So the majority, the large majority, and also those who are included in the book, are photos that I, that I, that I took. Uh, today I will not have a kind of uh, lecture, as we discussed, you know, more a short presentation of the, 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 the field and also of the book. That's why also the, it's not the real PowerPoint presentation, but you know, the photos, you know, uh, very interesting, very uh, evocative uh, uh, by themselves uh, that are in loop, you know, so if you have some question about some, for example, this No Masters I like the most, it's from Romania, uh, we, can, we can discuss it, you know, uh, any time, you know, if you have some question, then I can interpret it. And then some, some years, some five years, five, six years ago, I said, let's... Um, Let's do a book about it. And I was, I was starting to look for a theoretical and methodological you know, books, uh, textbooks, you know, how to research graffiti. And the story, as before mentioned, you know, fashion and clothing, you know, and, and food and, I don't know, humor, jokes, you know. There, there are a lot, of books, uh, a lot of books that are collecting examples. And, so, and there are fantastic, very beautiful books about uh, photos of graffiti from all over the world, of the big names and so on. And also some short articles but not a real theoretically founded uh, and methodologically uh, strong, um, strong book. So this, I find this very, very disturbing. As I said, you know, I have lots of materials, I have lots of empirical you know, data from everywhere. I did a lot of interviews, I'll come to this a little bit later. So how to approach them? And then I said there's a need to make a book that has this, um, that, that would have in the first part uh, this, you know, strong, you know, like a scientific uh, uh, toolbar, and in the second part uh, some, some, some cases. And th then I uh, started to think where to get these ideas for the theoretical backgrounds, you know, uh, and methodological approaches, and I took them from, you know, neighboring, uh, neighboring fields, you know. Also cultural studies is a mixture of critical theory uh, of, the, of anthropology, uh, and of art uh, theory. So I also you know, use the methods mostly from these three fields, but also from the critics of ideology, so the Frankfurt School, and the critical communication study, like uh, semiology and other, and other um, currents. Uh, so these were my theoretical foundations, and then also the concrete methods that I used uh, to, uh, to research this fascinating, um, this fascinating uh, uh, production. And this, in a way, it's, it's uh, included in the first part uh, of, of this book. The first three, uh, the first three uh, chapters are epistemological, uh, then uh, it's about terminology, definition, short definition, strong, uh, bigger definition, more encompassing, uh, and then theoretical part, so how to understand, how to uh, see, and how to understand, and how to decipher graffiti, and then what I see as the most important part, also the methodological part. As I said, I combined different methods. Uh, they, of course, you know, were, 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 were developed by other authors. I just, in a way, upgraded them and adjusted them to this particular field. And this, so this is the first part of the book. The second part of the book is, uh, you, it's, there are examples where I test this theoretical and methodological uh, intro, uh, introductions, you know, to, uh, to some concrete topics, like chauvinist graffiti, like anti or pro uh, refugees graffiti, nostalgic graffiti. Uh, two uh, chapters are about football fan graffiti, ultras graffiti, and this is extremely important. Also, how that's how I noticed here in, in, in Ukraine, you know, some um, 
graffiti are related to historical personalities, you know, so all these historical quarrels, you know, that are still so much present even today, are also reflected uh, on the walls, you know. Um, I was doing recently research in Serbia, you know, and it seems like the 20th century is still going on, you know, because there are so many personalities from First World War, from, First World, from Balkan Wars, 12, 13, First World War, 14, 18, Second World War, 41, 45, and the last wars, you know, from 90, 90s on, you know, so like uh, these wars continue uh, on the walls. So this was my ambition, and uh, then I um, sent it to some publishers, uh, and uh, th it's interesting what kind of responses I, I got. They said, yeah, it's a good book, it's a nice book, a lot of photos and everything, but cut the theoretical, the first part, theoretical and mythological part. I said, no, I'm <laughs> cultural studies scholar, you know, this is not kind of... Um, collection, you know, of different cases, you know, because without the foundation, you know, they look, you know, very nice, but, you know, they lack the structure, you know. And I said to a few of them, and it was very interesting, you know, very respectful university presses, you know, and they were, they did not like it, you know, and then, you know, one of them accepted the proposal, and I'm glad that also, this is its sixth version, it was translated in six languages so far, all as it was meant, so theory, methodological, methodology first, you know, and then uh, case uh, case uh, case studies. Um, just maybe a few words, you know, because I'm speaking so much about these methods. You know, I, I'm trying to re see and research graffiti from four sides uh, of meaning. You know, there are four places where the meaning of the, this visual object out there, you know, visual message out there, can be studied. The first one is the background. As a cultural studies scholar, you know, we insist from the first hour with our students there is no text outside of the context. Many times you have to understand first the context and then understand the text itself. Um, the, second, the second side of uh, meaning is the author herself or himself. So I was doing also interviews, you know, what the poet wanted to say when she or he sprayed glue or whatever, you know. So this was the second level. I used different types of, oh, there's another person that I would like to thank, Katerina. And we meet for the first time. Uh, she is the author of the, for, uh, for the, of the preface of the book. And Katarina, I will thank you then personally, but now also in front of everyone. So thank you very much for coming and also for writing this, this uh, uh, preface for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so the author. I was doing interviews, you know, with different uh, uh, writers, you know, from those who are doing more aesthetic graffiti to football Fans. This was a very interesting experience, you know, with the hooligans, how to talk with hooligans, you know, the tough guys, you know, with tattoos, you know. Um, uh, but uh, it was also very interesting, you know, experience, you know, and uh, as I said also, to, I always to my students, you know, if you gain trust, you know, in the social situation, you know, then you can really understand it and people really are willing to, uh, to, to help you in your research. Uh, so this is the second side of meaning, you know, so first background, then the author herself, himself. The third one is the cultural studies favorite, you know, the piece itself, you know. Uh, I use different methods, you know, so compositional interpretation, this, this old qualitative method, you know, taken from the art history. Then the second one is content analysis. I was counting, you know, how many times certain um, motive appears, you know, or which prevails because it's impossible to, to know the exact number of, of, uh, of, of, of different variants. And of course, the favorite one, the social semiology. Not only the knowledge about the science, but also of the, of, but mostly of the ideological meanings and political consequences of the science. You know, these science are important as any other uh, science in, in in our culture. So this is the third side, and the, in the fourth, the fourth side is very, how to say, Walter Benjaminian twist. You know, so from the producers to the audience to the public. You know, so action, so the question was what. What do we see out there if we see it at all? And who sees? And what kind of information uh, the, uh, they, they get? You know. So I was doing also, you know, interviews asking people, you know, what is your, you know, impression? What is your? How do you read? Do you read at all? You know, what is your idea about about your video? So these are four four places, you know, uh, where the meaning uh, of of this artifact, you know, uh, is is um, uh, is, uh, is is made. It comes it comes out. Um, Two more things, just to start to warm up the, this, this afternoon, this evening, you know, the shortest definition of, uh, of graffiti uh, would be that this is a specific 2 or 3D uh, visual intervention 
uh, into public illegal visual intervention in the public space that always interacts with the background. The spatial background, the temporal, where they appear, you know, historical, you know, ideological, and so on, you know. So, to, to say once again, you know, so illegal visual uh, in, um, uh, expression, you know, uh, um, always in contact, you know, with the, with the, with the background. Uh, another definition would be, as it is the title of the book, the images of dissent. You know, so the, the graffiti are always and um, street art are always kind of messages of uh, dissent of with the present. You know, or speaking aesthetically, we want to put something else out there. You know, aesthetically, but also politically, we are not satisfied with the, the political situation that is going on, and we will say it, and we will spray it. You know, we will, we will, we will, uh, we will do it. You know. The other shortest kind of you know, definition would be that um, and this is extremely important for researching political graffiti, which was my, my, my main point of research, is that they always respond to the political situation around, around it. You know? So more intense political situation, more graffiti. More boring, if you want, <laughs> less interesting, less dynamic, less it's going on out, uh, out, um, out in the street. So it's kind of litmus paper of uh, of a political situation uh, in, in a certain in a certain in a certain country in a certain place in a certain in a certain city. Uh, so that's that's why uh, I see you know I see that you know this division between aesthetic and aesthetical or subcultural graffiti you know which you know more poeticized street and on the other side political graffiti that are more they are politicizing the street is in a way artificial. We have to do it you know because we have to analyze we have to have some terms, you know, or some, you know, groups of uh, ideas, you know, that we can understand the complexity of the reality. Uh, so, on one side is this ideal type of more political graffiti, on the other side is this Weberian ideal type of more aesthetic graffiti. But actually, you know, when we're speaking about graffiti, every graffiti is in a way political because it takes the freedom that no one, you know, uh, gives the, the, the authors, you know. It's a transgress transgression in itself, whether this is aesthetical, political, uh, against morality, against whatever, you know, so uh, it's a no to, to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the present. You know? So this is kind of the second, in a way, uh, also important, important division, but on the other side, there are so many, it's, it's artificial division, there are so many uh, connections um, uh, between, between the two. And as I mentioned before, you know, I'm mostly interested in political graffiti and street art, uh, that's why I, you know, read a lot of history. I want to have so many. I want to have much knowledge, you know, about the background of certain image and of certain time. So I always do it parallelly, you know, so researching a present cultural, political condition in a, in a certain group, you know, and then to see how this reflects or anticipates even uh, it is anticipated in the streets uh, on the walls um, uh, themselves. Maybe that will be for the beginning. Um, Thank you, Mitya. Uh, let's start with the title of your book. Uh, so you, you call it uh, Images of Descent. Mm -hmm. I think, I suppose there is a lot of meaning within this. And then you say political graffiti and street art. Mm -hmm. But then the post-socialist period. Mm -hmm. So why post-socialism? Uh, and then please explain, uh, I assume that the audience really didn't have a chance to read this book. So. Uh, you are very kind of attentive to this methodology that you mentioned, that uh, publishers wanted to move out the methodological part, and then you, you were very critical, or you are very critical about all these world atlas of street art, and that these are just catalogs of nice images. Uh, so please kind of re-articulate again this, what is the difference between political graffiti and street art, mm -hmm. and why post-socialism? Mm -hmm. Post-socialism, because Post-socialist because we are living in times of post-socialism, you know, so um, also from coming from my personal experience, that's why also um, I'm including one, one of the methods that I also see, see as very important, not only in this study, but in general, is autoethnography, you know, so first we have to consider our own position, you know, and again, you know, we're referring here to the big names of anthropology from the beginning of 20th century, observing the observer, so, you know, so we are also the objects of our own research, you know, and many of these studies, including many of mine, you know, start with this, how to say, autoethnographic uh, introduction. I was born in Yugoslavia, socialist uh, times, went through all, you know, uh, the, the, the steps, you know, from being pioneer, going to the army, you know, 
uh, and I lived in Yugoslavia, in socialist, in socialist Yugoslavia, federal Yugoslavia, for almost half of my uh, life. So I know good and bad sides from those times, and then also good and bad sides, you know, of these times. You know, so I believe that I have this rare privilege, you know, to in a way compare, you know, and not to be. Um, nostalgic on one side you know, and not to be a um, fan of what is going on today. You know, there are good and bad sides, you know, shady and sunny sides of both. Secondly, cultural studies always deals with the present. In my view, it should deal also, it should anticipate also the future. It should think also about you know, the, the future, you know, uh, to, to anticipate what can happen, what will happen, you know. Uh, so it's not a historical uh, discipline, you know. So we have to do, you know, the history does, you know, if I may be a little bit morbid, an autopsy of what was already there, you know. Uh, my friends from history said you have to study history from, you know, the, the real historian starts history from before he was born. Okay, it's completely legitimate, you know, but it's there. I want to understand what is going on here and now, you know. That's why post-socialism, there, there could be also other terms, you know. Um, so. Here, you know, in, East, in Eastern Europe, you know, from the Balkans here to uh, post-Soviet space, you know, we have this combination of post-modernism, you know, and post-socialism. So these two posts, you know, so we don't know exactly where we are going. We know from when we, where, where we came from, and we are somewhere, you know, on a way in between. Good things are happening, terrible things are happening, like wars in ex-Yugoslavia, wars, war here, you know, and conflicts here. Poverty, and on the other side, you know, things that are, can be very, um, can be, can be, are seen very pro are progressive, you know, and they are really uh, steps steps forward, you know. So it's not, you know, as John Battista Vico would say, you know, corsi ricorsi, you go back, you go forward, you go, uh, you go forward, you go, you go back, you know. So it's all all, all the time we're doing both of these steps, you know. So it's not one linear progress or regression, you know. So it's all all, all there, you know. And then you, this is also explained, you know, in the book, the vision, uh, the, the distinction between graffiti and street art. Graffiti, like two dimension, you know, uh, and, and street art, uh, that is also called like post graffiti art, includes all kind of different techniques, you know, mostly stencils, stickers, posters, paste stubs, uh, engravings, three D objects, uh, latrinalia, arbo arboglyph, arbo arboglyph, sorry, arboglyph, you know, so you cut out, you know, some uh, some trees. Yeah, uh, not only trees. Trees, yes, yeah, trees. You know, in Dalmatia, you know, I took photos when they were putting, they were there, you know, raising cactuses. You know, I like Mary, of course, super. You know, that kind of, you know, all, all kind of uh, visual interventions that should not be there. You know, and some of them are just, you know, kind of um, more, you know, um, aesthetically based. You know, and the, some of them are directly political. You know, and there's quite quite a difference. You know, on different levels, you know, uh, of between the two, you know, uh, the, this more aesthetic graffiti are made by those who are, are the people who know what to do, they're the craftsmen, you know, they, they didn't know how to do graffiti, while the political ones, you know, are mostly done by activists with sprays in their, in their hands, you know, so they are not crafty, you know, some of them are, most of them are very um, unsophisticated, you know, very easy, you know, uh, simple, you know, and, and so on. And also the diction is quite different, you know, um, with the more aesthetic graffiti there's this polysemic element and with the political graffiti, political graffiti are actually political propaganda as any other type of propaganda, like a, com a commercial propaganda, you know, buy this product, you know, political graffiti say, you know, support this or support that, you know, or long live this or, you know, death to the other. So it's very clear message, it always go boom, you know, so it's, it's, it shoots in a way, you know, so it's kind of explosion, you know, street explosion, you know, of dis political dis dissatisfaction. So basically you are arguing that political graffiti is uh, non-aesthetic and it's even more can attack aesthetics and art. Uh, aesthetic or not, you know, this is very <laughs> touchy subject, you know, it's got its own uh, uh, aesthetic, you know, uh, Tomas knows very well, he's, you know, we are uh, peers in a way, you know, so I prefer in a way anti-aesthetic from the 80s, you know, like punk and heavy metal and so on, you know, <laughs> there's some other aesthetic, so anti-aesthetic is also aesthetic, you know, and uh, I believe, you know, with the political graffiti, I, I would rephrase now, you know, the, with political graffiti, the aesthetics is secondary, you know, the message is most important, you know, so the, as McLuhan would say, you know, the message is already the media, so it's ugly written, you know, because I'm in a hurry and I have to, you know, express myself, you know, I don't have time to make nice, you know, structure, you know, cares. Mm. 
shoot something, you know, that's, that's, a, that's the idea. No? But this can be also a logical position, that I do this precisely that I don't want to. Absolutely. Mm, nice absolutely. and beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely, you know, so go straight to the point, you know, go say what you have to say, you know, directly, you know, you don't beat around the bush, you know, you just, as I said, hit, you know. Well, when it comes to, you know, more and more poetic graffiti, you know, there's so many things there, you know, it's so multi-layered, you know, you can, you know, three, it's urban it's press, not, not about metaphors, but about kind of direct message. Direct message, yeah. You know, really shoot in the head. You, know. you so, also mentioned, uh, you, you cite Banksy, who says that if uh, street art will, any time, anywhere, will influence something, something like society, this will be illegal. Mm -hmm. So you say that illegalness is the kind of the, the core idea of street art and also graffiti, or this, this is a difference. As I understand, yes, and also when I was doing interviews and also when I you know, read interviews or you know, listened to, to different shows and so on, this is one of the ideas behind you know, this, this productivity. It can be, of course there can be graffiti aesthetics, you know, you can make a nice, I don't know, hipster bar, you know, or I don't know, MTV aesthetics. This is extremely interesting, you know, how the MTV aesthetics, you know, changed in the last 43 years since it happened, you know. I don't know, let's go to some other film, tattoos, you know, there are no tattoos until Spice Girls, so mid 90s, you know, and today you cannot go to, you cannot, you know, appear on MTV if you're not having having tattoos. Back in the 80s, it was, you know, the punks and metalheads and the prisoners and who else? Sailors had graffiti, so it was not aesthetic. And you know, Post Malone has got now them even on his head. So this was this was inimaginable 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you know. And the same is with graffiti. Today, you know, it's difficult to appear in graffiti uh, in, in MTV if you don't have some you know, graffiti, graffiti background, but what kind of graffiti? The same graffiti that you find also, you know, uh, on uh, in galleries, and they are, of course, like, you know, uh, I would say castrated, you know, so without, you know, uh, st without strong message, without, you know, this street in a way, visibility is another maybe uh, strange word, you know, but it does not have this edge, you know. Uh, so, just, you know, a few days ago, I, I was thinking about this metaphor, that it's like a dead tiger, it's like a tiger in the zoo, you know, it's still tiger, the, the graffiti in, in gallery, it's like a tiger in zoo. It, it's still alive, it's still tiger, but actually it's dead, you know, because it's out of its natural environment, you know. We are seeing there, you know, a pathetic animal, you know, not the king of the jungle. And so this, for me, you know, they don't bite, you know. Uh, but I, I, I always go to graffiti museums, I go to the museum, uh, the graffiti exhibitions, gallery, but, but you don't see a single Radical, so, so radical as it is out in the streets. I don't say it's not radical, aesthetically, political, whatever, you know, but not as it is uh, back, back in the street, you know. Okay, since we are at the center of urban history, I, I need to ask these historical questions, even though you, you say about the contemporaneity and then uh, that uh, cultural studies react on, on here and now, but still, graffiti is, I assume, the oldest art ever. I mean, in Ukraine, the oldest graffitis are in the St. Sophia Cathedral, which is the most uh, admired uh, sacred space in this country. And uh, this writing on walls, writing on trees, writing everywhere, it's very old. Uh, and then additional point here is that uh, uh, revolutionary artists of the 20s, like Mayakovsky, they would say that streets are our brushes, squares are our Palettes. So uh, this ide ideology that city should become uh, not just a space for art, but turn into art, is also very historical. So how can you avoid historical arguments here? I'm not avoiding. I'm always saying, you know, there's um, always a long historical tale of everything. You know, so people do things they were allowed to do or they are not allowed to do from times, you know, throughout the throughout the history. You know, so it's not that. Uh, one of the, ambition of, of, of the ambitions of this book was to, in a way, to de-Americanize, de-New Yorkize the, the, the notion of graffiti, you know. Because in many of the, as I said, you know, these books that don't have much uh, theoretical or historical background set, you know, well, all started, you know, with, I don't know, cornbread, you know, and other, you know, artists, you know, in the 60s and 70s, you know, in megapolis like Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, and on the other side, uh, Los Angeles, you know, so everything started in the 60s and 70s, come on, you know, <laughs> and this is a stereotype that, in a way, repeats over and over again, you know, like, I don't know, punk did not start in 
in England in 76 or in New York in 77. You know, it's something that started before, but then you know, it got you know, the, the, the recognition. You know. So at that time, you know, we took per important personalities who were actually from New York, you know, like Jean-Michel Basquiat and Keith Haring, you know, uh, the graffiti became kind of known, you know, also because of the Warhol's backing. It's, it's a, long, a long story which does not have to do much with the aesthetics and the idea of graffiti itself, but you know how it enters into the into the into the mainstream. So so yes, um, there as I said, now in the last two three years, you know, some really good books appeared uh, about graffiti and street art from, and it, they're showing examples from different parts of the world, you know. From, antique, from antiquity, you know, from, you know, religious inscription, love inscription, vulgar, what, what, everything, you know, it's, uh, it's there it, in its own specific, in its own specific uh, aesthetics, you know, but it's, it's there. So it, you have to put it always in a kind of historical perspective. And speaking from my, 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 um, uh, my, my country, a colleague of mine, now she will defend a PhD, uh, did a fantastic book about the partisan graffiti during the Second World War, you know, in Slovenia, because one of the activities of the partisan movement was also writing, you know, anti-fascist, um, anti-fascist uh, slogans, you know, everywhere, you know. And she did a fantastic job. She went to archives, you know, and talked with some, you know, old scholars. This is like old consumers, uh, so teenagers who were doing this, who were drawing this, you know, so yes, we have to see this continuity, but as I said, you know, I'm a culture studies scholar, I'm presentist, you know, I want to understand this world yeah. here and now, but not forget, you know, this history behind it. Yeah, you, you mentioned that you uh, also, uh, I don't know how frequently, but you use your bicycle, your camera, you describe the whole methodology, how you kind of jump on, and go to the city. How do you grasp the city? I mean, you mentioned that this is very difficult. So for many graffitis, it is important the, the frequency. So if the more frequent graffiti, the more important it might be, but then still you say that some people can just multiply their graffitis for the political or whatever messages. So how do you make the map? So you follow Guy Debord, you just, you know, make the random map. How do you catch graffitis? <laughs> In, in different ways, you know, you mentioned the board, fantastic author, you know, I've mentioned the other, uh, Walter Benjamin, his idea of the nerve, you know, so first you go around and, you know, and you taste the city, you know, on different levels, you know, uh, so this is the first step, you know, uh, the, the second step would be uh, to prepare yourself, you know, historic, to, to, to read about the history and uh, then to get the, as it is in all, human situations, not the right people, you know. So whenever I go, I ask someone, you know, if someone knows someone and someone, you know, because this is, you know, or, or illegal, it, or you want to be very, uh, how to say, um, covered, you know. Um, but when I, when people know that I do, that I do this for my, you know, almost hobby, you know, that I'm not a snitch or whatever, you know, so I usually get contacts, you know, where it's good to see, where it's good to go. And then I just go, you know, and I try to, as I said, follow this, um, ideas of the others, my instincts, you know, and the historical kind of kind of background, you know. And I do and in my classes, you know, wherever I wherever I teach in Slovenia and also in other places that I taught, you know, I always take one of the classes is that I take students out, I prepare myself before and we go around and we uh, discuss graffiti, you know. So the, the first half the first half, the first part is I explaining, me explaining graffiti, you know, and the second part I, you know, uh, tell students that they explain. Of course, they explained it also before, you know, but now it's only to you. Please, what do you see there? How do you see there? And yeah, so it's interesting, you know, to make this agora, you know, uh, aesthetic, political, aesthetic, political, you know, and discuss these things that are that are out there, you know. So I always quote this biblical uh, quote, you know, um, you have eyes but you don't see, you know. So you have to, you know, if we have eyes, I don't know, for Renaissance art, for Baroque, you know, for Malevich, for all great masters of, of visual art, you know, we have to, in a way, adjust them to understand also this uh, fascinating creativity. And another thing, methodological, you know, it's, I always do, <laughs> I, look, I look like some, you know, catatonic guy, you know, I always go on each street, one, on white, uh, up and down, you know, because the other perspective, you know, is very different from the front, front one. I would like to have, you know, eyes also on the back, you know, <laughs> but I don't. So that's why I you know it's good to see and you find another another, another perspective. You know. So these are little you know maybe hints and tricks. You know. So you combine Flaner with research and uh, you do all the 19th century stuff, yeah, <laughs> 21st century. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 like, I'm a 20th century guy, you know, so it, it makes sense. 
uh, yeah, my, my, uh, I'm not going to do a lot of questions now, so to give people possibility to ask questions also, but uh, I have a few more. Uh, you mentioned de decentralization, let's say this way, so like de Americanize yeah. the graffiti studies, but then uh, you also have the whole kind of uh, intensive list of uh, self definitions of people who work in this field. I mean, graffiti, whatever, artists or activists, and they all use the English names, like, you know, the, the, the earlier uh, master is toy, uh, the dagger, the piecer, uh, everything is defined in English. And then many graffiti artists, they indeed work kind of for international audience specifically, so they can, can convey the message in English. So still, there is something kind of from the dominance here, but then how do you deal with this? Do you have Slovenian names for taggers, for, yes. for masters? But isn't it the same in, uh, the, the, it's the same in all fields, you know? So we're speaking here about, you know, the, really, you know, the imper imperialist logic, you know, on all senses. For example, when I was looking for the, uh, the, 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 the novels and the poems, you know, of Ukrainians, Ukrainian writers, you know, in Slovenian, I found four of them, four, you know. And, and Google, you know, so five, you know. Okay. So it, it's the same story, you know, but this here is, as I heard, you know, from my colleagues and friends, a fascinating, you know, uh, scene, you know, uh, literally scene, you know, but how much do we know about others, you know, but here, you know, they have also, the, first, the book was first published in, in, in English, you know, they, they have the power, and also here's a typical Foucauldian situation, you know, you have power, and then you, you have knowledge and you have power, so power is in a way knowledge, you know. Uh, so yes, when it comes to terminology, you know, because now we are going back to, to, to New York and Philadelphia and the Western world in the 60s and 70s, they were, the f they were the first, you know, to give names to these practices that already existed, you know. But in some cases, we were just discussing the other day in Odessa, you know, we have better names, in Slovenian, in Slovenian we have better names for, you know, for example, in, in, in English there's um, the name for the writer of graffiti is writer, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the author of graffiti is writer. So just write, you know. In Slovenian we have grafita. So I don't know, most probably have it in, in and also in so Serbian Croatian. We have mainly in English. Writer, uh, bomb, okay. bomber, uh, bomber, crew, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> tiger. Yeah, yeah. So we use but all this. I don't know in Slovenian, I don't know who invented this, I have to search this out, you know, but it's grafita, you know, which is much more appropriate name for them. But as I said, as, as with many other terms, you know, so we are so much dominated, you know, with, with the one part of the world, you know. Uh, on all levels, you know, that also the, I don't know, the basic books, you know, I would like to read more about some other, I just met here um, a scholar who does graffiti, but I don't read Ukrainian, I don't read Russian, and her texts are mostly in Ukrainian and Russian, you know, so I have this problem, and I, I'm completely, uh, I'm very sure, you know, that these are as valid as some other, you know, but that's, you know, as Wittgenstein would say, the limit of your language, of, of your language are the limit of your world, in a way, you know, so. I'd like to know more, but that's why you know also most of the most of the, the um, literature, theoretical literature, you know, is uh, is mostly from the Western world, you know. And we have to balance. That's why you know it's good to find people around, you know, and publish books, you know, in different, you know, exotic languages, as it is Slovenian, Macedonian, <laughs> Serbian, you know, and now also not only the Western ones. Yeah, I, I also hope that this book will, uh, if not change the game, but then at least gives the. the, the food for thought, yeah, so that people can think about this kind of naming and because mainly graffiti is about text and writing, so it somehow uh, should be connected also to local languages and local definitions. Uh, and uh, coming to your kind of meat of your work, uh, you use case studies, as you mentioned, more than 20,000 images, just a small percentage is presented here, not even probably percentage. <laughs> I don't know how to calculate this. Uh, and then among your cases, you uh, you work with uh, nostalgia, as you mentioned, Yugoslavia or Yugo nostalgia, which is rather known here as a phenomenon. Uh, then you mentioned two important characters: uh, Gavrilo Princip, who killed the, the emperor, and then Rudolf Meister, the famous Slovenian military guy. 
and then you mention the mountains. I, I, I remember crossing in Slovenia many times. This is an extremely beautiful country. It's a mountainous country, but then I assume that the landscape put burden on Slovenians also. So the, the, we, we don't have graffiti with mountains here, but you have. So can you comment more on these uh, kind of cases? could put also a glass of wine, you know, you also make a lot of wine. You know. There's a song that we Slovenians like our wine so much that we don't sell it for no cost, <laughs> which is a definition of alcoholic, <laughs> so, which is also true, but okay, let's not make any propaganda. You know, so. Yeah, you know, um, this image, you know, the high Slovenian, another very, very interesting um, topic, you know, so cultural studies is like this, has this um, uh, uh, William Blake's uh, idea behind, you know, to see the whole universe, you know, in the in a grain of of, of, of of sand, you know. So the Slovenian nationalism when it started in the mid nineteenth century, so around eighteen forty eight, fifty, you know, it was very anti German, you know, and the, the the Germans living, you know, in the present day territory which is ethnically mixed as it was everywhere in Eastern Europe, you know, were starting to climb mountains, you know, so this was their idea, and also we are climbing mountains, building our body, but also building our national spirit. You know, and the Slovenians, as Czechs on the other side, you know, of the Austro Austro Austrian Empire, also started to go to mountains, you know, so the mountains became, you know, mountaineering, you know, then the skiing, you know, and all the culture connected with the Alps became predominant. One of my, my assistants back in the 2000s made a fantastic book uh, that was entitled the Alpine Culture of Slovenians. You know, so the idea of the Slovi of Slo Slovenia is mountains, high, high mountains, and so on. Uh, that's why you know the Slovenians are very proud of uh, the, this high, high, high mountains. You know, uh, there's a, even a saying: "You are not a true Slovenian if you don't climb the highest mountain, which is called the Trihorn uh, Mountain, Triglav, Triglav, yeah. Triglav, which is graphically very easy to 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 drop." Uh, it was this is Banksy's, uh, not Banksy's, but the guy, the uh, Basky. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so he was Slovenian. <laughs> no, no, no. There was another Slovenian, very famous, connected also with this place, you know, the whole Central European place. Uh, and this was Joža Plečnik, you know, because he, this, he was the first guy in the 30s, you know, to put this kind of Slovenia, Slovenia uh, coat, not coat of arms, but part of coat of arms. So the Tripla mountain, tuk, 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 and then like, uh, like water, like sea, you know. Uh, this so this is kind of Alpe and Adria, you know, became kind of symbol even before the Second World War. Then during the Second World War, it was appropriated by the Slovenian partisans, you know. So you see many of these uh, images also today, like Three Horn and OF, Liberation Front, of Sobodina Fronta, you know. So this was one of the signs uh, in, in times of partisan, in partisan resistance. And then, you know, it was included in the socialist coat of arms, until 91, and it is included also now in the contemporary Slovenian coat of arms. You know, so there's this Triglav mountain and uh, and the, and the sea. So the Slovenian country between mountains and the sea, very poetic, you know. But I, then, of course, this is an official symbol that is appropriated by different groups for different purposes. You know, the Band Leibach and the Neue Slovenische Kunst movement. You know, they are also kind of very keen to the Alps and the whole the imagery of the Alps. Uh, this was appropriated by the football fans, you know, so, by all kind of, you know, mostly now uh, right-wing groups, but actually in the beginning it was very left-wing partisan, partisan symbol, you know. So again, you know, it's a kind of, became an empty signifier, you know, where you can, you know, invest everything, you know, I sell whatever, you know, and I put Triglav, you know, the biggest Slovenian insurance company is named Triglav, you know, so there's a lot of Triglav in, in Slovenia there, or I don't know, in the team in the different symbols of different uh, events in Slovenia, conferences, congresses, you know, there's always this trick, you know. And why not, you know, that also this uh, artist, uh, political activist would use it, you know. Okay, so nationalism is uh, important uh, in graffiti art. And uh, here I'd like to ask you about this uh, uh, problematic issue of graffiti, since city belongs to everybody and not to anybody, it's the field of contesting uh, groups uh, uh, and uh, controversies. Uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, there are plenty of graffitis related to refugees, uh, to hatred, to fandom and uh, ultra-right, uh, and then anti-fascists and so on. And uh, the, 
there is often this explanation in Eastern Europe that these kind of trends, they're connected to kind of uh, bad economic situations. So in, in typical Marxian uh, explanation that there are some groups who exploit nationalism in order to dominate others. But then Slovenia is rather well off country. Uh, uh, well, how, how you actually explain all these kind of battlefields and why nationalism is so spreading and anti-refugees moods also? Uh, why are they on the on the walls? Economic explanation explanation of any social phenomenon process, you know, is one-sided very much. Uh, of course, we have to start from somewhere from the basis, you know. Uh, but it's only one aspect of it, you know. Why why Brexit? You know, Brits were doing well, and they, you know, and the, the arguments were very nationalistic, very chauvinistic in a way, you know. Why America first in the United States, you know, it's a well-off country, you know, for some, not for all, you know, but still, you know. So it's not, you know, immediately correlated, you know, with the economic situation. I don't know, one of the most closed countries is Switzerland, you know, they have very strict immigration laws, you know, but still is the most, you know, prosperous country in Europe, you know, so it's not connected only with this, you know. And here, I believe, you know, in the East, in Central and Eastern Europe, you know, with this, uh, long history of multiculturalism and multi-religious situation, you know, we lost the opportunity to preserve it in a way, you know, so we did the same mistake as the, same, the Western countries did, and this is ethnic and religious, you know, homogeneity, you know. I believe, you know, the plurality on all levels, not only ethnic, you know, but also cultural, political, religious, gender, sexual, whatever, you know, is something, you know, that is, is good, you know, it brings prosperity, you know, and not closing, you know, to some, to some more narrow uh, identities, you know. So I don't connect it, you know, with the only bad economic situation, you know, but, but also, you know, to some social programs, uh, so, so, excuse me, social politics, you know, that in a way um, uh, are very much reserved toward uh, multiculturalism. Now, multiculturalism in many Central European countries is a kind of nasty word, you know, so something, uh, they will bring diseases or refugees will break women or whatever. So this most, most you know, uh, vulgar, you know, but still very efficient, you know, explanations of, of you know, the most, most of the domestic violence happens in, in the world at home, you know, that, so that women are more, more, the most dangerous place for women is home, not the street, you know, and, you know, you know but it's can be, it can be used, you know, for populistic reasons, and we see, you know, that I mean, not only in Eastern and Central Europe, you know, but in many other places, you know, the, the so-called refugee crisis, 2015-16, you know, in a way helped the right-wing populists, you know, to get power. Not only here, but also in Western, Western European countries, you know, not to speak about the United States. You cite a lot of uh, critical uh, sociology or uh, critical school uh, uh, works and you directly cite a lot of Adorno, <laughs> and uh, you mentioned his famous quote, uh, art is a negative knowledge of the actual world. Uh, what do you mean by this, actually? The image of dissent. You know, so, <laughs> you know, the, the Adorno says, you know, the, the, the truth is in the in particular, in a, in, a, in, a, in a fragment, in a small piece, not a totality. Totality is always, you know, a problematic, it's always totalitarian, you know. So let's enjoy, as, as I mentioned before, with this, you know, quoting William Blake, you know, this little elements that through, through, the, through which you can see you know the whole universe around the whole cosmos around them you know uh, and of course he was thinking uh, his idea was of autonomous art you know not art that in a way is conformist you know that in a way um, supports the dominant discourses dominant dominant practices you know and that's why you know it's uh, it's it's not a coincidence you know that I started to research graffiti you know because I, as I said you know I also when it comes to music when it comes to films you know I always like the of 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 um, side of this production, you know. so, and this is what well, this is one of them. Of course, it it's, it, now it's a big business, you know, it commercializes, you know, it becomes appropriated as well, you know. But still, it has you know so many progressive, you know, and emancipatory. This is an important element, emancipatory uh, potentials. So it's important to study graffiti and street art because they have the potential to change the reality, or they show. The reality from the unexpected angle, or they sh they they, bet, they give us possibility to better grasp the, the real. What would be you know? everything? Everything. <laughs> first, first diagnosis, <laughs> then prognosis. You know, first you know, first 
as we know from Lukács, you know, first the critical realism, you know, then you know a step, you know, that emancipates, you know, from 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 this, you know, this another another step, you know. So you know what I mean? It's it's um, first you have to you know we know also from the most progressive uh, um, scientific currents in the 20th century, like I don't know, uh, the feminism, you know, or gay lesbian studies, or or um, uh, uh, studies of uh, racism and so on. First you have to identify, you know, the First, you have to study the enemy. First, you have to stu study, you know, the, the other side, you know, how this function, and then you can, you know, uh, to understand it, and then you can, you know, really uh, start, you know, also some 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 uh, emancipatory um, emancipatory uh, politics out of it, you know, because all of these and many others, you know, are envir environmentalist env environmentalists, <laughs> also, you know, they are not only some new academic disciplines, but they also have this, you know, activist potential, you know. And in my view, it should have, you know. Otherwise, science, you know, become is still part of problem and not the solution. It should it should provide answers, you know, not only give good questions. Yeah, we we share your attitude. I think Center for World History does a lot of similar things. And uh, my final uh, questions are about the book. Do you like the book? And how how do you actually feel that all these images that you kind of it's richly illustrated. It's beautifully done. Uh, but then you, 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 you continuously say that uh, this kind of art is very auratic, so it depends on the place, the wall is important, the background is important. How do you feel when it is published? <laughs> you put this in the prison. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I, I know, I know, I knew, I knew that I would get this question. Besides being an admirer of street, street creativity, I'm also a teacher, I'm a professor, you know, so I like, you know, for pedagogical reasons, you know, also to put, you know, the, uh, taking photos, you know, I put them, you know, behind the, the, the covers. So yes, I'm doing this, you know, terrible sin, you know, to commodifying, you know, but on the other side, you know, if we, if we don't speak about it also in academia, about all this, you know, then, the situation will be as, as it is, you know, we only do, you know, classics, which is, of course, the first step always, you know, and completely forgetting about, about, the, about, the, new, the, about the new things, you know, so. And my idea is, you know, of course, behind this book, uh, which I'm very satisfied, you ask me if I'm satisfied, I'm, you know, thrilled, you know. Uh, and also, it's very interesting, you know, that um, the two books, you know, from, uh, there are six editions, you know, six translations, you know, the, the ugliest one, the, the most, you know, the, with the, the poorest design is the original one, you know, and the two with the richest design are from Slovenia, which is a very small market, two million people, you know, so I don't know if you dozens will read it, you know, and Ukraine, who is in the middle of war, you know, so can you see the parallax, you know, so those who could afford, you know, did not do, but anyway, you know, so it was the first step that led to this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful piece, you know. Well, my ambition was at the end, you know, to make um, a study that would uh, uh, inspire people to write even better better studies, you know, kind of, you know, book that they can, you know, uh, step over, you know, in their own researches, you know, so I'm looking forward for follow-ups, you know, in different languages that I can master, uh, so it's, uh, as I said, you know, I see it as a, uh, and hopefully as an inspiration to, to other studies. Yeah, that's perfect, and now I can prescribe the chapter of your book, and then we can walk around and discuss your text and then graffiti yeah, all together. But we are very we are very happy that this was published. Uh, yes, I have to say the style is great. The academic work uh, at, 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 the th at the threshold, at the crossing of various approaches and disciplines. And uh, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, to everyone, I have been given one by media, so I'm not, not, not giving it up, but we will have a copy here at the center, so please come to the library and uh, you can ask questions, but please ask them in English or otherwise we'll need to translate. Uh, basically, we can give, give media a headset, so in principle you can ask your questions in various languages. Uh, Sophia will get this set up, so... Um, if you have any uh, remarks or questions, I understand that no one's read the book so far, but uh, apart from me, right? I understand that no one's read the book so far, uh, only me on the quiet, on the low, but perhaps something of our presentation has uh, resonated with you, so please, uh, let's give you the floor. Okay, I'll, I'll do it in Ukrainian then. Uh, if you have translation, Uh, 
thank you very much for this uh, presentation and for uh, a wonderful discussion. I was I also look forward uh, to uh, giving a get, giving the book a closer uh, closer read. I'll uh, I've, I've I've taken a look at a few pages and I um, I have a few questions I guess that uh, have also been discussed I suppose about things that interest to me um, about this culture in general. You know the pol political graffiti. You mentioned um, the context of space and the context of time that are very important for this graffiti. That uh, they're important to be viewed in, in that uh, against that background uh, where where they are. And so, uh, and we've also discussed some historical or perhaps political or social background of these of these graffiti that you study. But it'd be interesting. I would be interested to find out how. What is your impression, or how would you describe the spatial, uh, the spatial background of those of the graffiti that you collect, of that you study? F for example, uh, how how what does it look like in space, in the urban space? Because from what I can see in the graffiti that I've seen, including the political graffiti, they are on the one hand they are on very visible space, so they're displayed, they're on display, they're 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 there to make a statement. Uh, they're very visible, and on the other hand, it seems to me we have a category of graffiti that, apart from their message, they try to be more hidden, right, more enigmatic in some more enclosed spaces. For instance, here in Lviv, we also have places like some kind of abandoned buildings or unfinished buildings or scrapped buildings where nobody walks, essentially, apart from people who paint this graffiti, and then the walls can be completely covered with various uh, graffiti, but then but they are not on display. They are not uh, a statement that will be seen by everyone. And sometimes also in public space, on some very visible wall, but the graffiti can be hidden, hidden, enigmatic, and only those who really pay attention, uh, you know, if, if you have eyes to see, right? Like you said, they will see that graffiti. So it will be interesting for me to find out about the space. How would you describe that, that space, that background, that spatial background? And, uh, Following up on that, another question about what I see, what I see in the contents of the book. The contents of the book mentions the authors of the graffiti, and that you have had the opportunity to speak to them, and hear their views. And I'm also interested to find out how does how does this conversation um, happen with those who very often wish to remain anonymous, perhaps, or they wish to they want to be in this. A condi condition of dissent and they make this statement and they are outside this visible space they don't always it's not it's not always even possible to find out who the author is so how does this happen the search and the conversation with with these people who are always uh, who are often invisible or anonymous okay do i answer yes, yes. super questions thank you thank you very much what what, huh, sorry. what did I mean with this um, the importance of, of space? You know, the space and times are the two, they, they pretend to be, this is the idea of ideology. Ideology always pretend that it's not ideological, you know, and what is the most non-ideological, that is the deepest ideology, according to, 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 uh, to Althusser, you know, the time and space, you know. Each society always first marks times, time, Time and space, you know. So this, they are no, not natural. They are the most political elements of what we do. So and we, and we know from wars, you know, this is ours, you know, or you know, where did everything started? You know, it started with a revolution, you no, know, with a Christ birth, you know, or whatever, you know. And the same is with the same is with, with the space, you know. For example, um, uh, it's uh, I don't know uh, in Slovenia, the, 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 I don't know the, the church is very uh, conservative, much more conservative than some other countries. Uh, in general, you know, and the most, you know, anti-clerical, uh, most anti-clerical graffiti are put where? Not in some abandoned spaces, as you said, these abandoned spaces are mostly used as kind of, you know, uh, black boxes, you know, just, you know, to try to rehearse, you know, but most of these anti-religious, anti-clerical, you know, graffiti are put on the churches and they're immediately bleached over, you know, or, I don't know, uh, anti-military, you know, on the, on, the, on the barracks, you know, or, you know, uh, problematizing police violence, as we discussed before, you know, in front of the police police uh, stations. Or, you know, now we are moving to another sphere, very serious for those who are in, you know, football fan graffiti. You know, so if you are adversary of uh, of the, you know, you don't like the oppo opposite opposite team, and then you spray, you know, the graffiti of the other football team on, and this is the, you know, this is the sacralization, you know, of, 
Or there's an image, I don't know if I, if I have it here, you know, again coming to Slovenian mountains, you know, there on one mountain pass, there are a lot of rocks there, just big rocks, rocks, stones, rocks. And some guy, some smart guy wrote on one of these rocks, and roll. So the whole, you know, the, the whole story is rock and roll, you know. It's just a joke, you know, it, it doesn't have any ambitions, you know, it's just, you know, if you have eyes, then you're amused for a second, and then you move on, you know. So you see, there's always the kind of, you know, uh, spatial and also temporal, temporal dimension of it, you know. The, the, the most graffiti city of one-sided graffiti city was New York when Trump was inaugurated. I was there, uh, this was late January 2017, you know, and the whole New York, which is already, you know, palimpsest of different levels of graffiti, you know, was covered with only, you know, there were, I don't know, tens of thousands more probably, you know, anti-Trump anti graffiti and street art, you know, from a little, you know, uh, um, stickers, you know, to chalk art, you know, not my president, on, everyone had to say something against, against, against him, you know. Doing interviews, I conducted five types of interviews, you know, structured, semi-structured, you know, um, biographical, uh, so kind of uh, in-depth, you know, uh, and um, also the group interviews, you know, for different groups. Uh, and again, I relied to the, the you know, anthropolo anthropological and you know, social psychological literature, you know, to, come to, to, to make, you know, the, the, the most appropriate way how to do it, you know. And as I mentioned before, you know, gaining trust is extremely important, you know. I'm, for example, I don't know, doing interviews with football fans, you know, I'm not 18 years old, you know. Uh, <laughs> football, you know, teenager football, <laughs> football fan, you know. But you know, again, you know, if you know the right people, I know some people, you know, then also students and young people, you know, can, can you recommend me, do you know, you know? And when they saw that two, two types of people they don't like, you know, it, so what are you, a policeman? I said, no, I'm not a policeman. And then Slovenia is a small country, so it, they can only check that there's a strange professor <laughs> who's interested in <laughs> after, <laughs> afternoon, you know, <laughs> while the incidents and all the teenagers, you know. Or if you are a journalist, you know, because, you know, they, Policemen just hit us, you know, and journalists don't have a clue, you know, they're just, you know. So now you will tell them, you know, we will tell you the full truth. I said, okay, you know, so, you know, the first step, you know, it was very interesting. And then also non-verbal elements are extremely important. I always say students, you know, where do they put you to sit, you know, in the middle of winter, you know, they all, they have these sleeves up, you know, to show the tattoos, you know, or whatever, shorts, you know, to have this, you know, strong, you know, hairy legs, you know, but with their symbol on, you know, so all the t-shirts, you know, or whatever, they put you somewhere where you can see everything that what they put there, you know, and again, you know, it was easier than you think, because, you know, from, they, they don't see themselves as enemies, although they preserve, you know, kill the other, you know, on the other, really terrible words, you know, but actually they're more rivals, they're more like partners in the same, you know, so they knew each other, you know, so there's a strange guy, what is this guy, Velikon, Velikon, yeah, Velikon, what a strange <laughs> He's interested, so suddenly I still have them in my telephone, you know, address already there, you know, so it was easier than, um, and here I also use the methodology that uh, one fantastic, very young um, Italian political anthropologist, Madalena Gretel Camelli, developed when she was researching Casa Pound. Casa Pound, you know, it's a... Uh, youth alt-right movement in Italy, like uh, right-wing fascist, neo-fascist squatters and punks. So they are, you know, like their counterparts on the uh, left side, like anarchists and so on, using the same also uh, imagery and everything. Just the symbols, you know, and of course political ideas are completely different. And she's, she went to them, she's a young scholar, she's an MA scholar was uh, back then, you know, and she said, you know, I don't share your views, I don't share your opinions, you know, I'm mostly on the other side, but I want to know more about you. And this was a fair deal. Yes, we are different, but still, you know, they were tolerant enough to invite her, not to all activities, you know, and she did a fantastic book, you know, the fascist del terzo millennium, you know, the fascist of the third millennium, fantastic book, and she said her strategy was uh, empathy, not sympathy, you know. Uh, in Slovenian language, you have this expression, zastopiti nekoga, means I understand you, if I zastopiti go behind her or him, you know, so the lady there in white would zastopiti, would understand the lady, you know, so, you know, it's, in English it would be coming into your shoes, you know, so I put myself in your shoes and then I see the world as football fan, you know, the ultras or neo-nazi, whatever, you know. So, you know, there's, uh, yeah, well, yeah, completely legitimate, yeah, of course, but completely legitimate, you know, we have to understand, you know, the different positions, you know, so, so, you know, it was, um, 
it was always a challenge, you know, because as, as you said, you know, fantastic observation, usually they want to be hidden when it comes to some of them. Some of them identify freely, you know, some, some of them even write, you know, their, you know, email address, not email addresses anymore, this is an old school, you know, Facebook, you know. Uh, but with some, it was very interesting because it was kind of game, you know, so I know that you did things, but, and you know that I know that you did things, you know. But you don't say, you say, there's some interesting pieces out there, you know, or they, I get a message, you know, go to see a vandal appeared, you know, that night there, you know, so do you know who was? Then I continue the, it's kind of, you know, it's, uh, it's it, it goes without clearly identifying, you know, but I'm, you know, 1000% sure, you know, from other sources, you know, that you did this on, you know, main square. You know? So there are a lot of cultural studies, cultural studies methodology uses these two eyes, imagination and improvisation. So we have to adapt, you know, to the situation, you know, and then to get the best out of it. I'm not a theory driven author, I'm not, a, you know, a school driven author, you know, by some, you know, yes, I mentioned, you know, Adorno, you know, but, you know, but not being, you know, sometimes I feel others. like Adorno, yeah? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm more problem-oriented. I'm interested in a specific phenomenon, a specific case, you know, and to discuss, you know, this glass from different perspectives and use appropriate tools, you know. In this way, I'm eclectic, if theoretically and also, and also methodologically, you know. Use the right tools, the right, the right ways how to research, not to stay, you know, with only one perspective. There is a very popular um, social media telegram in Ukraine and uh, drug dealers use it a lot for selling drugs and they use this tagging, on wall tagging and uh, in Lviv there was the whole war between like, uh, uh, I mean, social workers and whatever uh, kind of repainting these tags which would lead you to possibility to buy drugs. Oh really? Do you have this also? Like, because you mentioned a lot about business and how the uh, uh, kind of graffiti is appropriated by capitalism, mm -hmm. but then like all these semi-visible also activities within this black market, whatever. I'm not aware. I'm not aware of this in, in my country. I don't know. I have to ask. And it's a good <laughs> idea. You know, so I'm going to ask my informers. You know, so. <laughs> but I see you know, how these um, techniques and also sensibilities and also um, ways are used for different purposes. I don't know. Uh, like this sidewalk art, you know, for, I don't know, apotheque or whatever, or for, you know, night services, you know, as well, you know, nice girls, you know, everywhere I go, I see this, you know, on the floor, you know, so, uh, all, you know, it's, it's, it uses the same method, you know, but for, you know, very, you know, problematic purposes, you know, so again, you know, let's not be so, you know, um, uh, strict, you know, I mean, in, of course, we have to have kind of working definitions that must be um, uh, upgraded all the time, you know, but then see also, you know, the derivatives out of it, you know, how this can become a business, how this can become something dangerous, you know, or how to, can this become offensive, you know, in, in terms of, you know, the gender inequalities, you know, sexual, ethnic, political, and so on, you know. The students in uh, Odessa, I believe, you know, uh, were saying, you know, when we were discussing, you know, the saying in the liberated territories now in Ukraine, how much of this, you know, pro-Putin graffiti and anti-Ukrainian graffiti. And this was the same in ex-Yugoslavia, you know, when the, the, the one side, you know, the, the conquered the other terrain, you know, what was there on the walls, just genocidal calls, you know, let's not to even to continue, you know. So there's always, you know, it's a battle, you know. It's yeah, a battle. Yeah, it's part of the visual fight. Yes. Uh, do we have more questions, comments? Yes, please. Sophia will give you the microphone. Yes, take some. Yes. Uh, so graffiti is um, is something very dynamic, and it's a process that's constantly uh, changing. Uh, you you collect many images, you photograph. Um, in the streets, do you have a sense that? Uh, you preserve uh, this for for study. You mentioned, for instance, your great archive. So, do you have? Uh, do you intend? Do you feel that you are somehow archiving, preserving these materials? And if so, how do you organize it? How do you systematize it in order to better understand and uh, and fix this context that may be that may change tomorrow? And is is it? You know this 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 temporal dynamics and these changes in in your in your um, studies. How do you see, for instance, the future of this uh, of your of your archive? How might it be uh, developed? 
that's the first question. And then another question that is perhaps uh, following up on Bogdan, I wanted to ask about this, the drug dealers or illegal practices, but it's also this um, connection between graffiti and uh, digital technologies. Do you see examples, for instance, how digital technologies affect graffiti, how they change graffiti? Uh, I don't know what, I, I don't want to make, I want to hear your opinion, I don't want to, I don't want to give ideas, but uh, yeah. Perhaps uh, let's perhaps let's take another question so that Mitya has more more to work with. Let's take another question. Let's take the second question and then. I, I can ask in English. Ah, okay. Um, okay uh, thank you very much for the presentation and for the book and that you came to Ukraine. This is very important in current times. Um, I wanted to when you uh, like made this definition of graffiti, you said that it is very important that it's supposed to be illegal. So, and in this presentation, you have actually a couple of graffitis, like for example, the portrait of Radko Mladic and other guys, uh, which are, I, I, would, I wouldn't actually call them illegal. So they are pretty much protected by the city and law not law, but like, but the, by the city government, and so the question is, um, what to do with those things? Could we define them as graffiti? This is the first one, and the second one: uh, Do you see this phenomenon when, like, something that's supposed to be the instrument of grassroots movements to express themselves became like an instrument of the government to fake the, uh, I don't know, the, the mood, the vibe of the city, and so on and so on. And how, what do you think about it? How does it work? So we have archive, digital, and simulation. I wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <don't worry. laughs> Sorry. Archive. Um, yeah, yes, Oof, archive. This is, you know, this is where the fun ends, you know, because you have to classify everything. I still do it, you know. Um, by year, if you ask me, you know, uh, and then I put it every year in different folders. But, but, but when I go out, you know, they are from different, you know, uh, different types of different, you know, different contents, you know. But still, you know, I still think that this temporal element is more important. I was thinking also to kind of make these clusters, I don't know, nationalist or, you know, more aesthetic, you know, or love graffiti or whatever, you know. But then I stayed, you know, with this, uh, with this uh, temporal, temporal element, you know, so I don't know. 21, 20, 19, and, and so on. You know. So you're a historian. Yeah, actually, yeah, we have to be everything, you know, or detective, you know, whatever, you know. Historian, detective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know, we have to be, you know. and also when you said, you know, this is extremely important to make archives, you know, because I was asked also for my previous researches, you know, where do you get this information, where do you learn it? And then wait for a minute, wait, wait a minute, you know, or a week or something, that I went to my old archives, you know, digital now before you know everything on paper you know and look you see you know so that's why you know you have to have proofs you know so that's why you know it's also detective work you know you have to have proofs like a on a on a on a on a on a on a lawyer you know like but do you add to your metadata like the wall was painted or the neighborhood was this and that do you all this metadata I always I always do you know the the detail and the brother brother picture Brother picture, you know, so always, you know, just the particular piece because I want the, the resolution is as good as possible, you know, and then also the bigger picture, so also the whole context, you know, and the historical one is because, as I said, you know, I, 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 I classify them historically, I don't know, there were uh, demonstrations last two years, you know, anti-government demonstration in, in Ljubljana, and then go month by month, you know, so how, how this changed. So this is the first one. The second one is digi digital. Oof, di Fantastic question, you know, and I always ask what to do now because we're living increasingly in the digital world. But I always say, and I believe that I wrote also in the book, you know, that before the Facebook wall, then there was this wall out there, you know, so physical wall, you know, so the wall is always there, you know, whether material or 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 or, or digital, you know. So there were a lot of you know discussions back in the 90s or in 2000 when the internet became you know popularized, you know, and became really you know became, developed a new ways of doing everything, you know, from identity issues, you know, to the new politics, you know, what will be the fate of graffiti, you know, so they, will they disappear because now you can put everything on, on online, you know, so this is kind of, 
was kind of challenge, you know, for the old style, it's old style analog, you know, doing, you know, outside graffiti, you know. But then we see that this, uh, that this, uh, um, uh, um, the sphere was, uh, as always happens, you know, in the history of the new media. You know, aha, now the telephone is, was invented, people will not write uh, letters anymore. Yes, people phone, you know, but also write letters. Or, I don't know, invention of cinema. Oh, now people will not go to the theater anymore. Yes, they go to cinema, but they also go to... So, in a way, it enforces, you know, it always, it's complementary and not exclusively. And the digital revolution, you know, uh, brought so much, so, so many new elements, you know, uh, to, to the graffiti making, because you can just see what is happening around the world, you know. So it's more an inspiration than a kind of uh, problem for the, even more, you can get even more, you know, ideas from, from elsewhere, you know, and also more, I don't know, you can copy or you can whatever do, you know, so it's more information, you know, and more, 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 more um, inspiration, you know, so it does not exclude, but it develops. Then another, you know, if you if you look at the, the literature about graffiti, you know, there are some new uh, approaches, you know, how, what, if we say, you know that it must be in public. The graffiti must be in public. But also, you know, the the, the, the internet is a public. You know, so it's also kind of public space. You know, so it's a public sphere. You know, so graffiti there. You know, so digital graffiti. So not with the color, not with the spray anymore. Can be as as, as legitimate as you no know, the the old way. You know, so this kind of you know the, the whole new current develops. You know, within these cultures. Digital, digital graffiti, you know, so not people, you know, who are covered with the paint anymore after doing this, you know, but just, you know, get behind the computers, you know, completely legit, you know, and are not exclusive, you know, in, the, in, this, in this sense, you know. Excellent questions, you know, <laughs> Mladic. Mladic, you know who Mladic was, you know, the butcher of Bosnia and Herzegovina and some other, you know, butchers were also, you know, very problematic personalities that were put, not only on Serbian side, not only Mladic, and others, you know, in Serbian side, but also on Croatian side, and some other, you know, some war criminals, you know, that are celebrated, you know, uh, by some extremist group, you know. But most of the Mladic and other, you know, um, uh, not only stencils and graffiti, but also murals, were made illegally, but then protected by the state. I agree with this, you know, but I don't think, or maybe they were, you know, sponsored by some, you know, right-wing organizations, or even by the state, there's some speculation, you know. But it, it, it's very interesting, you know, how this, one of my colleagues, you know, he's a Croatian-American, you know, guy, Vjeran Pavlakovic, uh, who is doing, you know, these memory studies. He said, you know, now something that is made illegally, like celebrating war criminals by the nationalists, is then protected by the state. So, you know, this musealization of the past is not state-run anymore, but made by this, you know, right-wing extremists, but then protected in the second step by the state, you know. So, you know, you see that it's a... It's a new step of, you know, appropriation, political appropriation of the public, of the public space. And yes, this is very much connected with your set, second question. You know, I said, you know, this is mostly weapon of the week, as James C. Scott would say, you know, people who have deficit, uh, who have communication deficit, that have other means, they draw things on the walls or whatever, you know. This was traditional view to graffiti and street art, and now it's becoming increasingly also not only the weapon of the week, but also the weapon of those in power, because for them, for many, I don't know, th those who are advocating dominant discourses, this society is even too tolerant, even too plural, you know, so we have to just radicalize the position, so go, you know, step forward, you know. So that's why I believe it's very difficult to estimate, because, you know, you cannot count the exact number of graffiti anywhere, you know, so there's not a Google, you know, graffiti, you know, way how to, even in, the most remote street, you know, things changes and after some days, weeks or whatever, you know. But in my opinion, you know, after following this, uh, this, this, this uh, creativity for so long, I see much more of this political graffiti confrontation, this cross out wars than it was before. Traditionally, the streets were more, you know, kind of left radical, left to left, left radical. And now it's becoming more and more, how to say, balanced, a lot more, much more confrontations are, are going, you know. Uh, and uh, so I believe that this Gramscian ideological struggle for ideological hegemony moved from the, the traditional media and also, also you know, electronic and the digital media, now also in the streets. It was not that, uh, it was, it used to be different, you know, decades, decades ago, you know, so now much, much more struggle of those who are power of, uh, weapons, who are using the video as power of the week and also the, those who are um, 
using graffiti as power or power, uh, weapon of those in power. But it's a excellent question. And again, you know, it's not uh, in each of the cases it can be a little bit different, you know. But still, kind of my general opinion is, you know, that still most of them are made illegally, but then protected by the state. Also, when I was, and I believe that this is in the forward in Slovenia for not in this one uh, developed there. Um, when I was taking photos of this uh, Mladic, for example, in Belgrade, it was gu guarded by a young teenage, you know, uh, football fan there, a Grobari, this is Vračar's Grobari area, you know, central Belgrade, you know. But then there were some curious guys walking there, you know, in civilian clothes, you know, and it happened to some of the activists, anti Mladic activists, and also anti nationalist activists, anti chauvinist activists, who were throwing, I don't know, yogurt or milk there. Old ladies, you know, were beaten by tough guys there, you know. So they were there, they were protecting something that was illegal. So you see the paradox, you know, illegal creativity became kind of, you know, protected by the state, you know. So again, you know, there's not a big difference between state fascism, you know, and the, and the hooligan type of fascism. You know. Yeah, we're, we're stepping into the new era, you know, of tools. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's moving, you know, to, to different directions, you know, not all, you know, progressive, not all emancipatory, yeah, unfortunately. Sure. Yes, please, if we have we have a little more time. Thank you so much for, for your presentation and your book and coming here. Um, since you talked with authors, writers, um, my question is about you know their like spatial but in a way territoriality. They where not only where do they um, Paid, right? But how far they go? Because uh, your, 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 your book is a lot about Slovenia, but also other countries, but it's exactly in, in individual stories of writers of graffiti. Would they do in their city? How mobile they are? Would they go to another country? Uh, what that means and actually how that? Uh, Works and another is um, question is about reception. 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 How that changed maybe in a way because how you see from you know, your study and time how it's perceived more part of the less of illegal more part of whatever. what happens with that. And if you happen to talk with people who are living next to graffiti, who are not, who are living okay, next, next to graffiti, this is what they think. How that <laughs> change it. Why are you taking photo of this rubbish? You know, <laughs> look what I did to my wall. You know, so they're angry at me. You know, but I said, I'm, don't kill. You know, not even a messenger. I'm just a weird guy taking photos of you know. Ah! <laughs> so I also had that kind of you know comment. Speak about the mobility. You know. Uh, ah, sorry. Uh, as much money you have, so much music, so, you know, it depends, you know, so it's uh, those who can afford, you know, to, to do this, you know, they do, you know, they're invited, now there are also some, you know, like festivals, you know, in Ljubljana now for the fifth year consecutive, you know, there's a street art festival, you know, again, it has official part and then also unofficial part, and suddenly you see things that are around the, the, the space, and this happens everywhere, and this is organized again, you know, going against these rules, you know, and I have this mixed, you know, so in biggest of, this is his situation that I'm, I'm in, you know, as a fan, as a professor, you know. Uh, uh, but w if you ask me, you know, there are so many, you know, layers also about this, you know, mobility also, um, uh, and also the gender element, for example. I would really recommend you a, a book of Nancy McDonald that I'm mentioning here, you know, and I have it in PDF, but if you ha I have it in PDF, then you can get it <laughs> even easier than, than it's even easier for you. Uh, which uh, she, uh, she she was particularly interested in feminist graffiti, so not just feminist graffiti, but women in graffiti in graffiti culture, which is again, you know, this patriarchal pattern repeats. You know, it's not that cool as it is for, as it was not also in some other you know ways of you know I don't know music and so on. You know, it seems to be so cool of everything. You know, but when it came to you know that hits the wall of you know patriarchy, it does not cross it. You know, and also in punk, the girl the girl punk was needed. You know, so. Hardcore feminist punk was needed in the late 80s, you know, to cross this border, you know, so uh, Bikini Kill and other, you know, or in Slovenia, Toji Babe. Uh, <laughs> Toji Babe was an excellent, you know, feminist hardcore band, you know. And uh, Nancy McDonald was doing this study comparing, you know, mostly the fate, the creativity of female uh, graffiti artists 
in London in New York, you know. It's an excellent study, ethnological, very, you know, uh, based on uh, based on interviews, you know, comparing, you know, their perspective, you know, and how they moved from one place to another, and also how they moved across this patriarchal border in a way which was very high at that time, and it still sometimes is, you know. Only now some, you know, there are some texts about, you know, the feminist, uh, feminist graffiti or, you know, uh, the women in graffiti, in graffiti culture, you know. Uh, and I did, you know, after I published this book, I, I wrote a text about the feminist and anti-feminist graffiti on the Central Europe because I have, again, you know, hundreds of different examples, you know, uh, from different perspectives, you know, using different methods, uh, different types of expression, you know, about this, you know, gender uh, and also sexual, you know, uh, uh, stuck, uh, uh, hierarchies, you know. Uh, and then the, uh, yeah, that, that was it. Reception, reception, yes, <laughs> reception. Uh, I have, um, unfortunately, not in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, presentation, but in the book it is. Uh, there are only three. Uh, you know, I did like you know more kind of personal, you know, because I don't have money to do big, you know, uh, public opinion surveys. But actually, there are three uh, made, you know, in the history of researching graffiti and threats. So can, can you imagine how underrepresented this is in humanities? And you know, because we ask. Every, Everything about everyone. What is opinion about EU? What is opinion about I don't know sausages or whatever? You know? <laughs> but not graffiti and street art. You know, one was made. You know, comparing you know the situation in the states and you know and United Kingdom and, and Great Britain. You know, and the other one was made by one very uh, my excellent student back in Ljubljana. Uh, she in a way sneaked some of the questions in a bigger uh, bigger um, um, opinion poll. You know, and she get some very interesting. Uh, uh, some very interesting numbers. They are in the book somewhere. I forgot the exact numbers, you know. But still, you know, how, do you see graffiti or not? You know, and the numbers are astonishing. You know, so how many people see? How do you see them? You know, uh, and there are different answers. You know, the most frequent was, of course, vandalism. You know, so vandalism. This is the, the, the word. You know, so even more popular than graffiti. You know, vandalism. <laughs> Can you please invent some other insult? There are so many other insults that can be used. You know, come on, you know, so barbars, not you know, vandalism, not uh, hones or whatever. What could be you know, worse? Idiots in the world. No, vandalism. Can you invent? And then many, in, I have cases also um, in, in the other presentation, but also in the book, you know. Then self identification of the graffiti writers, you know. Not, a, not an artist, just a vandal. Or, you know, from a feminist, from a feminist um, graffiti writer in Ljubljana, you cannot take. The walls from us. Yes, Vandalka, me the Vandal, you know, so Vandalka, yes, Vandalka. So, you know, this self identification, you know. Uh, but usually, you know, it, it's uh, when I was, it's interesting, for example, also when I lead, the, as, where, where there are some festivals and so on, I also, you know, um, take, you know, people around, you know, and then we discuss, you know, the, the graffiti, and also students, as I mentioned before, you know. They said, yeah, but I passed, you know, hundreds of times here, but I don't notice, you know. So we have to develop, you know, as we do as teachers, you know, as as, as professors, you know, to, to, to cultivate this sensibility for different things, you know, not only for the usual, the classical one, which, don't, don't get me wrong, with all due respect, you know, but also the new ones, you know. Again, you know, were there any theoretical books about tattoos, you know, or humor, only a few of them, curses? An extremely interesting topic for cultural studies, you know, the study on culture, you know. So again, it's a legitimate topic of research that should be. And I tell to my cultural studies students, well, this is your job to do, you know. We did something, some things, you know. There are no, no books about, I don't know, progressive music until the 70s, 80s, you know. So there's always this. That's why I insist, you know, that we have to research what is here and now, you know, not to wait to be long gone, but as long as we still cherish, you know, this sensibility for the, uh, as Roland Barthes would say, you know, he said, you know, that you have to be first fan to be a good critic of it, you know, so you have to have this out of scientific, you know, extra scientific, extra academic, you know, impulse to do something and then to be critical about it, critical about it, you know, not just to repeat, but, you know, not to be fan, but to see the all kind of consequences. So I'm not a fan of this, you know, Graffiti and street are also also very critical critical of this. You know, so many we just in this hour and something we discuss so many layers of this. You know, I'm scared of sometimes what I, what I see on the walls. You know, and the, the images that are scary, but they are there. You know, we must not ignore it's media as any other media. You know, complex and controversial. 
Yes, uh, Mitya mentions that graffiti often has uh, violent uh, uh, slogans that they, they can kill, anything can kill, but some things can perhaps heal or generate or help. And I think that uh, many such phenomena are paradoxical. You have a question? Yes? But please, microphone, because we have a translator. Go on. Uh, yeah, so I was unfortunately late to your... Uh, Can you start, you start again? I didn't hear. Oh, ah, okay. So off. unfortunately I was late for your awesome presentation, so my question may be not as profound as the previous um, <clears throat> audience here. Uh, it's almost childish, honestly, and your last piece of your previous answer kind of predated it. So it's almost like uh, which dinosaur is your favorite? In all the body of work, in all these numerous art pieces you researched, uh, do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite that appealed to you personally or aesthetically that like made an impact? On you? <laughs> this one? No masters. No masters. <laughs> and the other one, you know, it's a funny one, you know. Uh, I took it in Zagreb. Nutella is everything. <laughs> the whole truth of the world, you know. Still there, two masters and lots of Nutella. <laughs> no, I'm joking, you know. It's, it's hard to say, you know, which is your favorite band, which is your favorite filmmaker, you know. So it's very difficult. It's everything, you know, and so many, you know, this. I think that we have to stay open as, as much, you know, to have all these senses open, you know, for the new things that are coming, you know. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is to be conservative, you know, in your cultural taste. The culture is developing so fast and so in so many directions, you know. And you have to understand and also to appreciate this complexity, you know, not to agree with everything, of course, you know, but still. Uh, so this would be my, my favorite one. <laughs> no so you are anarchist, yeah? Whatever you say. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like levels, you know, but I don't like ma masters either, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, right. And I like Nutella, so you know, <laughs> shoot me. <laughs> no, a little bit. Uh, I assume uh, by your Italian accent that you, you, you frequently travel to get real Nutella or some Italian chocolates and uh, enjoy the reality there also. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for taking that much time. Uh, but we are really happy uh, that this project was uh, fulfilled during the war uh, in Ukrainian language, that you came here physically by yourself, this is important for us, and then uh, we'll then try to add to you, because uh, Nitya says that uh, uh, he is dreaming about the uh, not the Google Earth, but then uh, Graffiti Earth application uh, for the future, which would then uh, combine all the possible visual uh, urban communication. And uh, probably we will add slowly to your uh, big archive, and someday some book on Ukrainian graffiti will appear. And uh, maybe you, we missed something that you wanted to say, and you have the last chance, sorry, <laughs> to say this. I just want to add, you know, that there are some authors that I met, that I met here, but also some that were could not come from Kharkiv, for example, although I was invited, but we could not go there, you know, uh, who do graffiti studies. But again, you know, we're turning to the, this point, you know, I just don't know about them because they're written in Ukrainian and in Russian, you know, so it's, they're completely unavailable to me. And I hope, you know, uh, we're just establishing now a kind of cross-cultural group led by a wonderful scholar from Romania, you know. Uh, to kind of make a group of you know scholars from different parts, including from uh, from Ukraine, you know, to make kind of network, you know, of the people who would be who would who, would, who recognize you know this as a legitimate topic for scientific for scientific research, you know, that can only reach already well you know established topics as as, as they are, you know. So I'm I'm missing that you know that uh, also voices from other from other from other parts of the world that you know. I don't I don't speak Spanish again. It's a, such a strong, um, such a strong uh, not tradition of making graffiti and murals. You know, in Latin America and also you know, in Latin world in Europe itself. You know, so there's so much there. You know, so but there really, and of course the only cure for this is comparisons and having kind of 
group from different parts of the world, you know, so you know, exchange, exchange, exchange. Yeah, we have here fans of this Pixacho and people from the Latin America that are big fans of yeah. the whole culture. Thank you very much for being with us, for keep, for continuing to come to the Center for Urban History. This is a very urban phenomenon, and we are very happy that this presentation took place here. And we are very grateful to the uh, Embassy of Slovenia for allowing this trip and for promoting this book, for supporting it, and uh, come again. Thank you. Thank you.